on Healing Part 2 Murdo MacDonald Bain. I wish to speak to you again in this letter about healing, as so many people appeal for help in overcoming their troubles. Nervous condition is one of the most prevalent causes of disease in the human body, for whenever the nervous system is upset it causes inharmony throughout. I will explain briefly the source of the main cause of nervous disorders. To do so, I must give you a brief outline of the common theories, which one knows in general practice, and which are used extensively by psychiatrists although not always with success. There is a fundamental basis upon which they do get a degree of success in some cases yet in most cases they fail, showing that their methods are limited in scope. If one has not a knowledge of the truth of being, that is, that there is no separation between God and man as the only true foundation upon which to build a new and free life, nervous conditions are liable to return, because the victim is not fortified with this truth which will stand him or her in good stead, when other distressing events occur. In ordinary life we meet with bottled up emotions and physical symptoms caused by emotional stress and fear, which becomes a subconscious or conscious stream seeking release, and this, seems to be more prevalent since the First World War. These symptoms may occur instantly or they may take some time to develop. Frequently they are not strong enough to push outwardly just when the event occurs. But by repeated distressing events in life this fear and emotion is added to, and eventually a true case of neurosis is established. We see here that it is not always the distressing event at the moment that is the root, but that which has occurred previously. This root takes growth through lack of understanding of the self, fertilized by repeated negative reactions and produces a complex situation. It is clearly seen then that a search is not always successful in gaining a release from the prison the victim has created for him or herself, through the lack of discerning the cause. For when one is awakened to the truth there is always a discerning of the thought or reaction, and the motive behind them. Thus there is perpetual freedom through this awareness. When the symptoms appear instantly it is comparatively easy to remove the condition. But when through a series of negative reactions, the symptoms appear some years after the initial cause, it is sometimes very difficult to search out the main cause. That is why analysis has so often failed, while a knowledge of the truth can completely revolutionize the victim's life and release fears and phobias on a higher level. They completely disappear as one gets a better understanding of life. The submerged stream in the subconscious or the unconscious, if you like the term better, is sublimated and freedom is obtained. In many cases which fail through analysis I find it easy to establish a state of balance by showing that the victims are the object of their own illusions, and when they get a complete view of themselves being one with God, impossible of separation, there is a distinct relief. This relief often enables them to speak or talk about themselves. I do not attach great importance to what they say except when something appears vividly to me. For instance, in a lady who suffered with a severe skin trouble for many years, which baffled all medical science as well as psychiatrists, I noted a strain of antagonism in her makeup against a near relative. I told her that when she forgave this relative and made amends and accepted the injustice done to her and she herself became unselfish, a perfect balance would be established and she would become whole. She immediately went away and made amends and returned in a week to me perfectly whole. Now this lady through her own experience has helped hundreds of people who suffered in the same way, not always with the same symptoms but nevertheless the same cause. Hundreds of other similar cases I could mention of so-called incurable troubles, these troubles vanish as by magic when a true state of harmony is established within. Many cases are the result of a desire to forget all about a distressing incident, a large amount of nervous energy is used up in holding back this distressing experience from the notice of the personal consciousness. By forcing the memory up to the conscious, the cordon of repressing energy is broken through, this energy is no longer required and is released for constructive action in the body. When we face awful facts fairly and squarely, they become harmless. But the great danger with ordinary psychiatry is to allow the patient to go without giving him or her a true foundation of his or her spiritual self, thus the cure is only half done. The complete cure comes through the understanding of the truth about themselves. If one is in constant fear of exposure this fear causes a condition to reveal itself in the tissue structure through the nervous tension, which becomes habitual. 
When one is strong enough to face the matter boldly through the truth of their oneness with God then the nervous tension soon disappears and the mind and body become balanced. When trouble comes upon most people they allow fear to enter which leads to further darkness. For when this crude form of dissociation occurs there is a mental conflict and repression added to by bad auto-suggestion which puts the victim in a state of prostration and fear, and later appears upon the physical organism. There is also the theory of perverted sex development. Sex life is both spiritual and physical, and in early life this dual action tends to appear in a number of ways such as sex curiosity, exhibitionism, masochism, sadism, etc. These tendencies disappear under normal development when the sex energies are used in the normal way, and the excess transformed into higher forms of social, intellectual, and spiritual services. The danger lies only when this creative force is looked upon as evil and then repressed with its evil association we create in our minds, with the result that it rises to the consciousness in the symptoms of psychoneurosis yet the exaggeration of the importance of suppressed sexual complexes can become a dangerous falsehood. It can have a nasty influence and tend to make the mind more fundamentally impure than before. Sex impulse has been looked upon as a danger to nature. When it is looked upon as an evil and negative thing, it imposes upon the nature and mind an impurity that does not really exist. We must not look from down up, but from above down, and see the glory of God's creative work in mankind. When we free our minds from these repressed fossils created through ignorance by continually stamping the creative power as an evil in our midst we will find a better race, free from the immoral practices we see today. We can separate the people in the world into three categories. There are those who lower their ideals to make the way easy for surrender to temptation. The result is not harmful to the body because there is no repressed emotion attached to it, therefore there is no conflict in the mind. But this is unhealthy as far as the soul is concerned, this type is general in the world today. The next type is those who, through compromise and cowardice when the mind works upon such cravings turn away in horror, fear and emotion. This grips the personality with the result that these experiences are oppressed and produce stress and strain in the nervous system, causing tension through lack of understanding. And ultimately produces an outbreak of physical or mental symptoms. The next type, is those who have gained balanced state of mind through understanding the truth about themselves. They deal with things face to face, and consider carefully the whole situation in relation to their ideals by true reason. Here the normal solution of the conflict is freed from morbid symptoms and the personally emerges from the conflict with added power. When we become aware of nature as a whole and begin to understand the higher nature, we will be much more able to understand the lower. Wisdom comes from above and not from below. When we understand ourselves we will understand our emotions as well. The result will be not repression but a glorious release with added strength. From victory to victory, from glory to glory, to become as we are the children of God. For in God we live and move and have our being, knowing that the Christ of God dwells in every living soul the conqueror. I have overcome the world not through the fear of God and repression of our guilt, but by understanding that we have been given dominion over all things. Love and service is the keynote to permanent recovery. Many a disorder has been permanently cured through the delight of a service in love to others. Forget yourselves in service to others, understanding the truth that the law is, to love the Lord thy God who is one Lord, and to love him with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. This then is the cure for all ills of the flesh and the mind. Peace and love be with you. Benediction. O loving Father, teach me to comprehend the utter uselessness of being afraid. Help me to remember that though death do come to all I am always alive in thee. Teach me not to paralyze my nerves through the dread of my imagination. As thy child I am born to overcome all trials of life fearlessly. Awaken me to thy all-protecting presence that surrounds me. Although I may be clad in armor I am vulnerable to disease. But with thee I am protected by thy loving care for thy art always with me. May the peace and love of God dwell in our souls to free us from all that assails us from without. Yours sincerely. M. MacDonald Bain <laughs>